If you're a Steelers fan going into this weekend, you've got to be kind of crazy at this point. The Steelers have a chance to make the playoffs after starting two and six. They, they need three things to happen. But there's also now the rumor that there could be an 18 playoff. Is that real? We'll talk about that. We've got Jeff Hathorn from 93.7 The Fan right here on the Locked on Steelers podcast. We're going to talk about that, all the games this weekend, and if the Steelers will beat the Browns right here on the Locked on Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter. Let's get into it. You are Locked on Steelers, your daily Pittsburgh Steelers podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter. Be your daily host of all things in the Pittsburgh Steelers. As always, you can find this show on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, and YouTube. If you're watching this video on YouTube, hit the like button on the video if you enjoyed. Hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel to get all of our daily Monday through Friday episodes as well as our bonus content. We thank you for making the Locked On Steelers podcast your first listen every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered all season long with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. Come on across. Back on the show, we had him on in training camp. Jeff Hathorn of 93.7. Of the fan, our Odyssey partners over there. Jeff, how you doing, my friend? I'm good. I- I'm fearful you're going to bring up some kind of predictions that I made that are just way, way <laughs> off. <laughs> no, 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 we are not way. all takes exposed here. Yeah, hopefully, people are getting it on the Odyssey.com. That's that's, yeah. that's, that's my hope there. You can get it on Odyssey.com or download the Odyssey app because that's a great way to well, listen to 93.7 and you can listen to Locked On Steelers. Two at the same time. It's amazing. But, Jeff, let's get into a few things here. One, let's talk about the Steelers before we get into the craziness of the 18 playoff thing and all that's happening here. So the Steelers have gotten themselves their 8-8. and They need to beat the Browns. They need the Jets to beat the Dolphins. And they need the Bills to beat the Patriots. If you had told me that there was an actual playoff shot at this just a month ago, I said, you're drunk, you're crazy, go home. (laughs) But they're here. What can you say about that has led this team down the path to getting to actual playoff contention yet again in the final week of the season? Well, first off, thanks to Miami for not being able to win a game over the last five weeks. Because if they win a game, it's, it's, over. it's all over. It's been over. But Miami keeps losing, which oh, is and all right. Listen, I, I think Mike Tomlin is at his best in these situations. I don't think he's the best game coach. I don't think he's the best at hiring staff in the league. Mm -hmm. He is the best at this, getting the most out of a team that a team never quits on them. Uh, And I think that's what you've seen. You know, different guys have said it different ways, but I I think basically this, they came back from the buy and said, listen, this ain't Steeler football. We're going to get back to playing Steeler football and we're going to improve. We believe in these rookies. They're going to grow. And they took it game by game. They were helped by a weaker schedule. Let's be honest. They were. Yeah. But they found a way week after week. They kept building on that momentum. And, you know, really that Ravens game they had or they would have a longer winning streak than they have right now. I, I really like the way this team is, has kept fighting. And, man, some other things have fallen their way to where the scenario just isn't that as far-fetched as it was, you know, just, what, a week or two ago. Absolutely. It's not as far-fetched. But – It's crazy to me that people are actually talking about the NFL making it even less far-fetched. So let's get into this. The 18 playoff thing, it started from, I believe, a report from Mike Florio and Pro Football Talk saying the NFL was in talks for one, just not not playing at all the Bengals-Bills game and that was was suspended uh, and and basically it's suspended because of the DeMar Hamlin injury also. Thank goodness that Demar Hamlin. Uh, they said he that his uh, he's neurologically intact. We have we've been praying for him here in Pittsburgh. Jeff's been praying for him. I've been praying for him. Everybody that that, it's that we we both covered him, and uh, it's such a blessing to see that he's back. But the football impact of that is that the NFL might just might not play this game, declare this game a tie, or just not count it in the standings for either one of them. And so in response, they're talking about since that game had a lot of first place AFC implications. What if we make first place not as big of a deal this year and make sure that the whoever gets the AFC championship, there is no, it's a neutral field. It's not a, it's not going to be played in someone's home stadium and adding an eighth seed into the playoffs, not just for the AFC, but also for the NFC so that basically the top two teams could get buys again and then three through eight play each other 
in that round or however else that they'd want to do it. But the point being, there could be eight playoff teams. People have been running with this since this was reported on Thursday. Jeff, I have a hard time seeing this come through. Do you think this is a real thing or is this going to is this one of those rumors that's that, that's uh, that's just kind of being pushed a little too hard? Well, I think what should happen is the Steelers and Lions ought to go play in the pinstripe bowl. And then the winner of that one, you know, you can have some, you know, somebody could play in the holiday bowl and then you can meet in the whatever bowl that you want to in the orange bowl. Uh, Listen, I think it's, I think it's nuts. You know, this is the N F L not N H L where basically everybody gets in. Everybody gets in. Don't water it down. I get it. What happened is bad. I like this proposal that of the ones that I've heard, the one that makes the most sense to me, if Cincinnati, Buffalo, um, or Kansas city end up playing each other in the AFC title game, neutral site, That's neutral fair. site. And you know, where's the perfect place really for all three of those teams, basically Indianapolis, yeah. Kansas city fans could come. It's an easy Buffalo place. Fans could come. Cincy fans could come. I mean, seriously, I would rather do that then add another week or add another team Mm -hmm. or have it where the AFC is on a bye one week and the NFC is on a bye the next week. Like just stop it. Stop it with all this. What happened to DeMar, they, they made the right call. It it would be weird to re replay that game at this point. I think that's done. Forget that. If it impacts any of the three teams, then you change it. You make it a neutral site. So that way Mm -hmm. no one, you know, is at a disadvantage because what happened to DeMar Hamlin. Uh, but this adding another team or these bye weeks, come on, man. Listen, thankfully he's better because then it's easier to go on with the business of football. But they really mm-hmm. needed to uh, not to be, you know, rough or callous. No, yeah. His feelings, but, you know, the league's got to go on. And I agree. I think it, they made the right call. And, and here's my thing. Honestly, like, even if it wasn't at a neutral site of down, down the road, you know what? Just tell you, like, hey, you know what? This is what happened. We, we, you know, we, we, you know, we honored, we honored Demar Hamlin with, you know, with just leaving that game by. The game's a tie. It doesn't hurt either one of you guys. Right. That way, it goes, it goes in the record books, and you, you are where you're at. And that's just that. And it's unfortunate. And I know some people out there saying, well, what about this? And what about that? But, Jeff, you and I have been here when the Steelers, they saw Ryan Shazier get paralyzed. They didn't even get a break. They just, you right. you got to go back out there and you got to play in this game. And they came back and won that right. game. And not to mention, and I know this isn't the same as DeMar Hamlin's situation, but the Steelers in 2020, when the Titans broke COVID protocols, got sick during their week. The Steelers had to move their game. They lost their bye week that year. No one cared about their their health and their safety and what's fair and what's not. I, I, and again, I'm not saying that things shouldn't be taken into consideration, consideration for DeMar or the mental health of either of those teams. Right. But focus on that mental health now. Get them all the help they need. But don't try to change up all these rules. Don't add another playoff team or nothing else. Roll the, Down the line in the playoffs, that is going to be what it's going to be. Take care of these guys right now. And Chris, really, it doesn't affect any of the teams that are trying to get in. It's the teams that are already in, and we're talking about seeding. Exactly. Now, if this happened where it was a pair of teams like the Patriots and Steelers, where this Jets, Dolphins, it, it's more complicated because yeah. then that game, you almost have to figure out a way to play it because somebody's going to get into the postseason. That's that's not the scenario here. We're talking about different seeding. Right. So only if that seeding and. And I know, oh, somebody's going to get hosed out of a home game. Well, not really, because you don't know if they really would have had a home game anyhow. Exactly. And how cool would it be to see what a neutral site championship game is? I don't want to see that all the time. No. But in one instance, in one year, with all the COVID stuff, all the adjustments that have been made, is it really mm-hmm. that far-fetched to do something it is. like that? Don't blow it up. There's a solution right there in front of you. Um, and I think they they need to execute that. And And who knows? You might find that one of those only one of those three teams is in at the end, and then they host anyway. Yeah, and that's the other thing is that like, what if it's the Chiefs? You know, what if what if the Chiefs are 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 are, are there and they're playing? I don't know the Chargers or something like that, right. and it's like. Well, that, those two teams have nothing to do with this, so it's fine. Go go ahead and yeah. roll with that. Um, so I'm with you on that. Now, I do think it's funny because we I, I got a good response from Twitter when I was pointing out, like, this is dumb. Don't add an eighth team. I don't care. But the Steelers fans are like, yeah, you're right, Chris. But if the Steelers are the eighth team, <laughs> I like this idea. And I'm like, 
okay. I, I just, well, I'm right with, I'm right. It, I, I think the NFL playoffs are special because they don't have everyone in them like they do with the NBA and the NHL. It's, it's better when there's less. Six was totally fine for me. Seven, I was like, okay, if you want eight, I'm tired of it. Yeah. And I'll, I'll be honest. I, I, listen, I realize seven brings, has brought New England, Miami, Pittsburgh, Detroit, Green Bay into the mix here. Mm -hmm. Seven's too many. Like I agree. No, I I wouldn't. I'm not. I'm not disagreeing with you on that. I don't see any of these teams, Steelers included, making a run at one of the the better teams. And I know people say, "Oh, but look at Green Bay. Look, Green Bay, they ain't going to win anything." I, yeah. I know Aaron Rodgers. He's on a little bit of a roll. Oh, it's Aaron Rodgers, and look out for. Uh, yeah, it's they're still not a great football team, and they're going to get waxed by somebody, even in the conference that isn't as competitive as the AFC. Exactly. Unless they match up with the Vikings and that's a well, unique situation. Yeah, that's happen. a unique situation. But like you're you're not there, there's no there's no seven seed that's that's walking in and smacking the Bills and or the listen, Chiefs. And and don't give us a history lesson about the Steelers as a six yeah. seed or the Giants mm. as a six seed. Oh, the Packers that was unique. Get it. Yeah, those were that those are unique. unique circumstances. And again, six seed, fine. Seven seed, extra consideration there. And an we're gonna break seed. down. Okay. Or, or an AC. You don't need it. But all that being said, let's get into the games in a bit here that are all going to count this weekend. There's a ton that factor into playoffs considerations. Others that factor into draft considerations. We'll talk about which ones are the most important to the Steelers in just a minute here on the Locked on Steelers podcast. But first, we got to talk to you guys about prize picks. Prize picks, of course, is daily fantasy made easy. Prize picks, all you have to do is pick two to five players. And then you, what you do is when you see those two to five players, you're going to see a, a prize picks projection. You just got to guess more or less than that prize picks projection. You do that and you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. And you're not just, you're not competing against others. It's not a pool of, you know, thousands of people. It's just beating the prize picks projection with your own guesses. And prize picks doesn't just do NFL, they do NBA, NHL, MLB, they do college sports, they, they do all sorts of sports. So go to Prize Picks right now. Download the Prize Picks app on your mobile device, or go to PrizePicks.com and you can sign up to play daily fantasy sports. Sports first-time users can receive a 100% is deposit match up to $100 by using the promo code Locked On. That's L O C K E D O N. Locked On on the Prize Picks app or PrizePicks.com. Back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, Chris Carter, Jeff Hathorn of 93.7 The Fan. Jeff, let's get into some of these games. Now, Jeff, before I do, I, I got to update our standings things. Because for those who don't know, Jeff, uh, uh, Jeff is filling in because Jenna was not able to do this Friday. Uh, she typically does. Things came up. Uh, she's actually done great reporting on the DeMar Hamlin situation. So she's been a little busy. But Jeff was so nice enough to join us here. Jenna's current standing in is still is now three games ahead of me. She picked up a game on me, Jeff. It's not right. Um, she has 156 wins this this year. I have 153. I place 40th. She places 30th in our league. But with over our 240 plus people who have been participating in our Locked On Steelers Pick'em League on ESPN, we have. A person tied first. They've been walking down the leader. Yappin Yinzer has been in the first place with 167 wins. They've been in first place for a while, but Jay Keister tied them this week at 167, and there's other people right behind him. Uh, Grantica's picks has 166. Double Yoy has 166, and there's plenty <laughs> of people right behind him. So keep picking with us. We're watching you, and we'll give you shouts at, shout outs if you guys win the league. So let's get to the picks that matter this week, Jeff, because – uh, there's a lot of games that do. The NFL always organizes so the division rivalries get to end here. Let's talk about the Saturday games. Chiefs Raiders. This seems like a gimme game. Chiefs should be heavily favored, are, are heavily favored in this game. They're, they're fighting for the one seat. If they win, they should get it regardless of whatever the NFL does with this 18 playoff. They've got they're in the driver's seat and the Raiders, they've just right. been folding late. I'm going Chiefs. Yeah, I'm going Chiefs. Uh Jared Stidham at quarterback. Against yeah. Patrick Mahomes. I'll, <laughs> that's all you need. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. And that's it. Right that's there. all we you know, that, that is the pick. The other Saturday game, Titans Jaguars, huge for the Ooh. for the AFC South. The Titans have been in a free fall. They sit at seven and nine. They at one point were sitting atop the division. Now the Jaguars are ahead of them in eight and eight. Last week, neither team's games mattered because this would be the game that determined it. The Jaguars win. They win the AFC South. 
they're in the playoffs. The Titans are out. If the Titans win, they win the AFC South. The Jaguars wouldn't be eliminated. Technically, they could still get in if the Dolphins lose, the Patriots lose, and the Steelers lose. So they would need a lot of help. Or, you know, if the NFL adds 12 teams to the playoffs, then everyone <laughs> um, But I'm going with the Jaguars, Jeff. Trevor Lawrence looks for real. The Titans have been fading, and he's been picking up steam, and the Jaguars have been playing better football. I am a big Mike Vrabel fan. I think mm. he's one of the best coaches in the league. I agree about that. Uh, I love Josh Dobbs as a human. I do, um, too. He's a nice, you know, he's a very I, great person. How do you not love Josh? If you ever met Josh Dobbs, you would love the guy. Mm -hmm. um, I like what Jackson, Doug Peterson's done a hell of a job. Trevor Lawrence mm -hmm. is starting to play better. They're using some of their draft picks. But I'm going Vrabel. I think Vrabel is a big game Ooh. coach. I think the Titans will win that game. That's interesting. Okay, that that's a that's a good pick, Dan Hathorn. Right. You're, on, you're on the Locked On Steelers podcast. Let's get to a Sunday games. Bucks Falcons. Buccaneers eight and eight. Falcons six and ten. The Buccaneers have locked up the division. They really have nothing to play for. They're just going to be the fourth seed in the NFC playoffs. I see them resting guys, but I still think they're going to win this game. I feel I think they want to roll into the playoffs hot. The Falcons. Take them or leave them. They've been struggling this year, but I'm, I'm sticking with the Bucks. Yeah, I mean, I, man, couldn't the Steelers be in one of these South divisions? <laughs> they could. If you they know, were, they'd have won the division. <laughs> then they're, they win, they're in. I mean, it's there just, yep. ah. Uh, anyhow, uh, <laughs> I, I just don't think Tampa Bay is going to play anybody. Now, you can't roll over a whole roster like you can in college because, That's what I think, yeah. you, you know, to your point, um, I just think Atlanta will have something to play for. Um, I think Atlanta will find a way to win just because I, I don't really know how interested Tampa Bay is going to be. Uh, yeah, there's pride and all that stuff, but Atlanta's got pride too, and they're trying to build something down there. So I'm, I'm going to go with Atlanta. Okay. Um, we're going to save Steelers relevant games for the end of the segment before we cool. get. So let's go with Ravens Bengals. And it sounds like, like, wait a second, how is that not relevant? But this is for the AFC North crown. Right. The Ravens have just been in a rough state. Lamar Jackson's been hurt. From what I understand, he's still not practicing. This is going to be the Bengals. I think they're going to wash the Ravens. Yeah, you know, I think the Bengals were like that defending heavyweight champ that walked into the ring and got knocked around for a couple of rounds. And they got and back then, up. And then got and then worst thing that could have happened, got back up and started throwing. And mm -hmm. I, I like where this Bengals team is going. I don't even know if this game will be close. I mean, if you, I agree. Something Lamar doesn't play, which it doesn't look like it. Uh, I don't think Baltimore has a chance. I think Cincinnati rolls. Same here. NFC South game here. The 6-10 and 10 Panthers at the 7-9 and 9 Saints. The Saints have kind of been hanging in there a little bit there. The Panthers looking like they had a chance at the division but then fell off late. But I'm going with New Orleans. They're at home. I think they find a way to get the win there. I think there's some magic in the Panthers right now. Ooh. Uh, in our town and I think in Carolina too. I, you know, I've heard a couple of their guys say, we want Wilkes to be back as coach. Like mm. They're playing for their head coach. I think they're going to be motivated. I think they want to prove something. Uh, I think Carolina will find a way to win that game. That's going to be interesting. AFC West, the Chargers are in the playoffs. They don't really have much to play for because they, they can't win the division. They face the 4-12 and Broncos, though. And I just I, – I struggle with this game because the Broncos have a new coach themselves. I'm going with the Chargers just because I know that they don't that they can rep, they're probably going to rest a bunch of guys, but I still think the Broncos are just that bad this year. Yeah, I think the Chargers could dress practice squatters and win this game. I mean, Denver, <laughs> there's, if there's any team that really has, has booked their flights and planned their vacations and are already at uh, you know a step out the door, I would think it would be the Denver Broncos after you know maybe the worst trade in the history of the mm -hmm. NFL. Uh, given the performance or lack thereof of what they've had from Russell Wilson this year. Yeah. I mean, not just, not just the fact that they traded to get him, but they traded so many picks and oh. they gave him so much guaranteed money. They're in a position where this has to work. You can't, if you dump him, you lose all that guaranteed money. You yep. lose, you don't get anything back for your draft picks. You so got to have the coach. something. So you dump the coach. There you go. Um, and, and that's what, and that's, that's what they did there. So now they got to find a way to make it work. We'll see if it does work out for this, for, for next season, but let's move along. We both have chargers there. This is a very interesting game. I also love NFC East rivalries, nine, mm -hmm. six and one giants at the 13 and three Eagles, the giants, I believe 
they're in the playoffs. They're locked yep. into the playoffs yep. as a wild card team. The Eagles need to win to lock up the one seed in the NFC in the NFC East. They also have a chance if they lose and Dallas wins their game, they right. fall into a, into being a wild card team, which was unthinkable just a few weeks ago. But the reports are that, that Jalen Hurts it was limited in practice again on Thursday. He was also on 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 Wednesday. They said he's trending upwards, but. I don't know what that means. Does it mean he'll play? If he does play, is he at 100%? I'm rolling with the Giants because I just don't Ooh. know what his status is. And if, if if he's not ready, I don't think Gardner Minshew does enough for them to win. Yeah, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with the assumption that Jalen Hurts plays. Okay. Because uh, I love what I've seen. And I'm biased here because when, when I went there and watched them play the Steelers, it was like varsity against JV. Like, it was bad. Like, they were – they were rolling at that point yeah, uh, under were. Sirianni. I, I think they'll find a way to get this done. I know they've lost the last couple of games. The urgency probably hasn't been there like they needed. There's some urgency now. I think Philadelphia is going to pick it up, and I think they're going to win this game. I, I hear that. There is a there is a team that is still in the hunt for the seventh for the seventh seed, though, and it's the Seattle Seahawks. They need to win and hope that the Packers lose. The Seahawks play the, the Los Angeles Rams at home. I do think they win this game. I know Baker Mayfield's brought some inspiration to the Rams and all that, but the Seahawks are just a better team. They're going to, they're going to find a way to win at home. Yeah. How about Geno Smith? Like, Hey mm-hmm. man, good for you. Yeah, absolutely. Congratulations to that guy. I mean, he seems like a good enough dude. Um, and to all the scrutiny he went under to go out there and, and have this team in the playoff hunt. Good for him. And the best thing for Geno is he'll go back to pass and won't have to worry about, where 99 is. So <laughs> I think I think Gino gets it done. I think Seattle gets it done. I mean, the Rams, man, uh they won the Super Talk, Bowl last year. It's they have they this is the officially the worst year by a Super Bowl winning yeah. team in the next year by that. But hey, that's what happens when you build a team the way you do with a lot of a lot of trades and a lot of assignments, and then those older guys get hurt and you don't have a bulk of younger players to kind of lift up the roster. Uh, we'll see if the Rams bounce back next year, but we're both taking Seahawks. Cardinals at Niners. Cardinals down to, I don't know who's their quarterback now. Everyone's <laughs> been hurt. But the Niners, if they win and the Eagles lose, they're the one seed. So if they're going to be playing to win this game. I've got San Francisco easy at home. Hell of a job by San Francisco. And that's that, mm-hmm. that's a system place. We saw it, it is. in the 80s with Bill Walsh be a system place. It's a system place again. Yeah. Um, I mean, kudos to their coaching staff. Kyle Shanahan, not yeah. just offensive, and not just head coach. Oh, defense is phenomenal. Yep, on both sides of the ball. That's a good football team. And if, if they had another quarterback, there would be no doubt in who the Super Bowl favorite would be. I think that's the only thing holding them back. Um, but the Arizona Cardinals are not going to beat them. Let's no. just be real. The Niners uh, are I'm right with you on that. Heck, I have them as one of my my dark horse two two in the Super Bowl this year with the way that they play defense and the way they control the ball on offense. You could take some of these teams, but we'll get to that later. Cowboys at Commanders. Cowboys twelve and four. They need to win. If they win and the Niners lose, and the Eagles lose, the Cowboys become the one seed. If they win and just the and just the Eagles lose, they are winners of the NFC East and the two seed. Commanders. They've had some nice moments here and there, but they're too unstable. I'm going with the Cowboys. Yeah, I'm going. I know everybody rips Mike McCarthy, but you know he's won a lot of football games, and it always seems to be his fault. Um, it, I'm sure Dax would tell you that it, you know he gets a lot of the blame too. But man, McCarthy gets no cred, no love at all. And the guys won a Super Bowl, and he's won a hell of a lot of games. Uh, they ain't gonna lose to the Commanders. Ron Rivera's great dude. He has quarterback issues. Some of them he created. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know they, they've got a good young. I think they have a good core if they ever find a quarterback, uh, but they're not going to find it this Sunday. Absolutely. This is a huge game. Sunday night football, eight and eight line. Oh, yeah, Sam House starting too. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah Sam House. That's yeah. the thing. Like it's yeah. just been all over the place for them. It's been wild, but eight and eight lines and eight and eight Packers. The Packers have found their feet. The Lions have picked themselves up off the mat to get back into consideration. This is the NFC playoff scenarios. If the Packers win, they're in. If the Packers lose, the, the, the Lions would be in if the Seahawks lost. But if the Packers lose and the Seahawks win, the Seahawks are in. I'm going with the Packers. I think they finished the season strong. Aaron Rodgers gets this team to the playoffs. Yeah, I love the Dan Campbell and Lions story. I mean, this group, they've been, you know, basement for a long time. Yeah, they were. And they found their way back in it. You know, mm-hmm. they 
got a lot of love because of being on HBO and people learned a little bit about them. And I, I get that love affair and they've had, again, some nice victories. Uh, all my mom's family's from Green Bay. And in their words, goal, pack, goal. <laughs> and, uh, it's going to be Green Bay. I hear you on that. Okay, now for the Steelers relevant games. And you might sound a little confused when I say that after I say this first game. Vikings at Bears. 12 and 4 Vikings at 3 and 13 Bears. Everyone's like, Chris, what, what do you mean? Who cares about that game? Be patient. Come on, I'm Kurt. taking the Vikings. Hey, right, exactly. Just the Vikings just need to flatten the Bears. Just beat the Bears. As you know, the Steelers have the Bears second round draft pick. Jeff, you're taking the Vikings, right? No chance. I don't think Justin Fields is even playing. Yeah, Justin Fields isn't playing. And, and this is a perfect game for Kirk Cousins to have a big game because it's meaningless. Exactly. <laughs> Kirk Cousins, six touchdowns, 500 yards. Right? Ooh, this is, that would totally be the Kirk Cousins move here is to, to blow them out and then just get crushed in the first round of the playoffs. Right? That absolutely would happen. I mean, but okay. No, go ahead. No, yeah. I mean, that's Kirk Cousins' forte. And then he can walk by the you know the media interview and say, told you so. <laughs> you like that? Yeah. Um, but so, okay, so that happens. The Bears lose. They finish the year at 3-14. and 14. This is the other game the Steelers fans should be watching. The two 13 and one Texans play the four and 11 and one Colts. <laughs> Terrible, right? Watch that. Yeah. No one wants to watch it. It'll also be happening while the Steelers play, so you won't have to watch it. But keep your eye on the score. I'm picking the Texans simply because the Colts have been in free fall. They don't look like they have any sense of how to win. The Texans, not like they do, but they've come close in some recent games that I thought that they actually gave a good effort in. If the Texans win, and the Vikings win, and I mean the Bears lose, the Texans would drop out of the first overall pick, giving that pick to the Bears. And then the Bears would also have the, the first overall pick of the second round, which means the Steelers would have the second overall, the first overall pick of the second round, which is the 32nd overall pick this year because the Dolphins forfeited a pick for their tampering scandal. So that being said, Steelers fans, there's something to root for here. Jess, though, do the Texans get it done? Wow. I keep going back right? and forth. Right. Here's, here's what I'm going to say. I think the Colts are once again going to do the Steelers a solid at the end of the year. This time it's going to be by beating the Texans. Um, uh, I, I want to go the other way. Uh, I think the Colts are going to find a way to win. And okay. That's going to, but hey, 33 ain't bad. 33 is still really, uh, still amazing value for the Chase Claypool it, trade. It's just, I think, the novelty of saying yeah, my, you had my the 30 second be, pick. You know, the Colts helped him out last year. Mm -hmm. I just don't know if they'll be able to do it two years in a row. And uh, and by that, I mean actually winning the game instead of yeah. losing like you'd like. Absolutely. Let's get to the playoff games that are in consideration here. Seven and nine Jets at eight and eight Dolphins. The Jets are out of the playoffs. There's no way they can they can mathematically make it unless there's an eighth seed. But the Dolphins, they've been in free fall. They've lost five straight. Um, I have to look at their injury report real quick here, Jeff. So as I stall for time, um, yeah. but I, you know they we know that two is not playing, and that we we know that injury situation there. The question Tyler would be Thompson. It is going to be Skylar Thompson. It wow. looks like it's going to be Skylar Thompson because I don't. And he's been limited. Yeah. Well, yeah. Teddy said that, it, and you know, it's not going to be cold. It's in Miami, right. but when you're dealing with a wrist like where you can't really grip the ball in those scenarios, you I don't know if you want to. I think from what I'm understanding, he'll be an emergency guy. Maybe you'll end up seeing him in there if Skylar Thompson is is horrible, um, but. Man, just think that game is down to Skylar Thompson and what I think Wilson's back starting for the Jets, right? They've gone back in that direction. So uh, I thought I thought he was. I thought they went went back to Mike White, um, but whoever it is, whatever it is, it, it's got to be better than the third string quarterback for the Dolphins. Yeah, and listen, I, I think they're uh, McDaniel was a risk to hire him as head coach. I didn't like when he lied about the concussion, the first one to Tua. So I've been kind of anti him and the Dolphins because I just I, I hate it when someone comes out and lies blatantly like that mm -hmm. um, when it's you're talking about somebody's health. Um, yeah. So I think karma's bit them and I think it will continue mm -hmm. to bite them. I think the Jets win this game. That's going to be wild. So that's one of the things the Steelers need here. Now, the other thing the Steelers need here, though, is the Bills to beat the Patriots, which seemed like a foregone conclusion for many weeks going when you were lining up all the things. This is one of the things that you easily slotted in. But 
with the DeMar Hamlin situation, they kind of they haven't been able to do full practices because the team's just been mentally recovering from what happened in the, in in that in that game. Uh, they've been doing walkthroughs. They are at home. They do need to win this game to have a shot at the one seed, regardless of how the NFL plays it. But the Patriots also need to win this game because if the Dolph, I believe if the Dolphins lose and they win, they're in the playoffs. It's true. Do the do the Bills win? I still say the Bills find a way to win. I think that they they're even more motivated to win for Demar Hamlin. I think that they carry that forward. They're still a much better team than the Patriots. I think it's and especially on offense. I think that they can they could light up the Patriots, play their style of ball. The Patriots might like slow them up for a little bit, but the Bills push through and get a big win. Yeah, unless the Bills hand it over to the Patriots because the Patriots are better scoring on defense than they are on offense. What they have seven right, they defensive are, yeah. touchdowns this year. Their Ridiculous. offense is a joke. Mm-hmm. So, listen, I think two things work in the Steelers' favor here. One, the news we got Thursday about Demar Hamlin. Mm-hmm. You can imagine the relief that yes, you know, he's absolutely. talking, that that he's improved, that things are going better for him. I'd imagine now it's like. Let's go out there and win this game and show him that we're behind him. And then it's the Patriots. For years, they tortured the the Buffalo Bills. And even though they've had success recently, when that emblem and that coach are on the other side of the field, I think Buffalo is going to bring its best. And I think both those scenarios come out in the Steelers' favor. I think, you know, the Bills win this game. I'm right with you there. So there you have it. In those scenarios, we both agree the Steelers would have a chance. If they win their game, they would be in the playoffs as the seventh seed. But will they? We'll talk about that in a minute here on Locked on Steelers. But first, we're going to talk to you guys about Bet Online. Bet Online has is your number one source for all your betting stats and sports information. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's NFL playoffs as we get ready for that. But also NHL, NBA, college sports, all of that right here on Bet Online. They also have plenty of betting podcasts that you can listen to, just like you listen to, to, to Locked On Steelers. So, but go to Bet Online. You continue to search for all your sports waging information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action when you visit. Bet online where the game starts. And we're back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, the Friday edition. I'm Chris Carter. He's Jeff Hathorn of 93.7 The Fan. Jeff, it's time to finally talk Steelers Browns. Now, I've done a lot of talking this week. We had our Locked On Browns host, Jeff Lloyd, come on on the Thursday episode. We had, you know, we, we've done a lot of talking about the matchups and everything. What is the biggest thing, the number one objective you think the Steelers must accomplish in this game if they hope to win? Stop Nick Chubb. We are on the same page, Jeff. They there we do go. do not let Nick Chubb run wild. Because if they do, then it opens up for Deshaun and Amari Cooper mm-hmm. um, and, and Joku in the middle. It is It could be a long day at Acrisure Stadium. I, I'm serious. Like, if Chubbs g- gets going, this could this could turn out to be ugly for the Steelers. They've got to yeah. keep playing the defense that we've seen in the last couple of weeks. And listen, for the most part this year, they played good run defense. Mm-hmm. Um, they got bullied by the Ravens. They did in the second half against the Falcons. They didn't do as well in Cleveland, but I think that was part of that was still getting over the shock of TJ not there. I think Ogan Joby, even though he hasn't, you know, he'll be okay. They're just resting him at practice. Mm-hmm. And all they need him, hey, just go out there and like take some linemen on. That's all you need from right. Larry Ogan Joby. Be physical. Uh, he's going to, you know, he's going to be fine. That makes the run defense better. Leal has found a run, uh, a role rather in that defense. I think he has been effective. So I think um, I think if they can do it, I think they will. I, I think that sets them up for for an opportunity. They certainly would set them up for an opportunity in that game. They gave up 171 yards on the ground to the Browns. They gave up just 205 in the air. Amari Cooper went for over 100 yards in right. that in that receiving game. But a lot of it, I agree, was based on running the football. And even with Deshaun Watson back, and I know he threw three touchdowns last weekend against the Washington Commanders. To me, the key is stopping stopping Nick Chubb. Do whatever you have to do to take away Amari Cooper and force Deshaun Watson to beat you with Donovan Peoples-Jones and David Njoku and all these other guys on the, on the roster. So I, I agree with the, the, play, the game plan here. Jeff, you're at the Steelers facility more than I am. Where 
what what is the situation with the injury updates? We we've seen Deontay Johnson back up at practice. He's fine. Yeah, uh, Najee Harris, he's good to go. But yep. there's questions about Minka Fitzpatrick. He hasn't practiced Wednesday or Thursday with an ankle injury. Uh, Miles Jack hasn't practiced either day with a groin injury. And Alex Highsmith limited in practice with an ankle injury. Um, Larry Ogunjobi didn't practice, but like you said, I, he's he's more stable doing that a lot this year. What do you think about though Miles Jack, Minka Fitzpatrick, and Alex Highsmith? I, I can't see a scenario where uh, Minka Fitzpatrick does not play. I mean, okay. I just – Minka will be out there. Again, they're resting him. He knows what's going on. I think they're being cautious. We didn't get more information really on Alex Highsmith, but I think it's more precaution. Miles Jack, though, man, he really wants to play. You yeah. know, I talked to him on Thursday, and he was like, man – I'm itching. I want to play. I've been in Jacksonville. Like I, I live mm-hmm. for these games. I, I want mm-hmm. these opportunities. And it was hard for him last week to watch, you know, Mark Robinson have a big game. Not that he didn't want that, but that he wants to be out there. He wants to play. Um, I don't know about Miles Jack, though. Groin injuries are tough. I mean, you could walk around and be like, man, look at this guy. He's walking around. It's fine. And you make one cut. And here's the question for the Steelers. If you have to be sure on Miles Jack because if you don't have him, you're probably going to bench and not dress Mark Robinson, which right. is going to deplete your linebacking core. You're already without Marcus uh, Marcus Allen, who's kind of a right your you reserve know, linebacker. emergency linebacker. Yeah. Uh, with that size, I need to know by Miles Jack, and I think by Saturday they'll rule him out. I, I just don't think they want to take a chance. I don't think we'll see a ton of Mark Robinson, but you want to have him at your disposal, uh, especially if you're struggling against the run. I hear that. On the other side, the Browns, Jack Conklin, their offensive tackle, an important offensive lineman for them, hasn't practiced Wednesday or Thursday. Um, neither of Amari Cooper and Miles Garrett, but they've been noted to not be injury-related. It's just veteran rests uh, for them. Denzel Ward, though, not given the same designation. He's missed both practices Wednesday and Thursday. So watch out for Jack Conklin, Denzel Ward, uh, and they have a couple other injuries there. But those are the big ones that the Browns have. Right. All that being said, Jeff. Give me not just your final score prediction for this game, but also what's the biggest factor and the biggest moment that you think leads to the result that you see happening here? Well, it's the Steelers not turning the ball over. Uh, They have to continue to what they've done with offense. And listen, they've only scored one touchdown in each of the last two games, but Mm -hmm. it's been enough because they haven't hurt themselves. And this was the plan the Steelers had coming out of training camp. You Mm -hmm. have these low scoring games. You don't turn it over. And you find a way at the end to win a game. They did it in Cincinnati, and then turnovers really killed them for a span of about a month, month and a half. Uh, They're back to being smarter. I think they're moving the ball better. I think they've established the running game a little more, and that offensive line has come a long way since the start of the season. Uh, They can't hurt themselves. And if they do that, and they can get enough going on offense – and Miles Jack can be relatively quiet like he was against Dan Moore in the first matchup. I think the Steelers win this game. I, I do. I think What's the your Steelers final score? Find a way. Uh, it probably won't be a pretty game. I will say the Steelers <laughs> win it 19-14. Ooh, I had 1913. Did you really? Yeah, I, I I made that prediction last night when we did it with with our guy uh, Jeff Lloyd of Locked On Browns. Nineteen thirteen was my score. I also felt it was going to be a very ugly game, very Steeler esque of this year, just physical and 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 lots yep. of failed drives. But to me, the biggest factor in this game, I think, can be Najee Harris because they do need to protect the football. But Najee Harris is one of the easiest ways to protect the football. Last year, when they swept True. the Browns, he averaged 140 yards per game against them. He was phenomenal. He This year against the Browns, only had 56 yards on 15 carries, did get a touchdown that kept, that kept them alive for a bit, but wasn't able to be the, the, the dominating player that we've seen him be against them before. But we've seen, and I think you would agree with the assessment, the last, since the bye week, Najee Harris has looked like a different player. Oh. He's been huge in a lot of these wins late. He was amazing last week with 111 yards on the ground. The week before that, he had uh, 95 all-purpose yards when you added both receiving and rushing. I think Najee Harris is the key here. The Browns have a terrible run defense this year. When you look at their the, the way that they've tried to stop the run, they rank 25th in yards allowed, 25th in yards per attempt, 27th in touchdowns. This is the key for me. 
get Najee Harris and Jalen Warren going. Kenny Pickett doesn't have to do too much. Maybe he throws a, a touchdown pass here, you know, at, at the end of a drive, a nice like little fade pattern, uh, and they, they pull one in. But let the running game dictate this. The Steelers, when they faced the Browns before, they were dead last in the NFL in time of possession. Now they're ranked fifth. Possess the football. Don't turn it over. Dominate the ground game, and then you'll be able to win because I think you'll put too much pressure on the Browns. 1913 is my final score. 1914 is your final score. Yeah. And if all things happen the way that you and I have said, I'll be back here. We'll, we'll all be back here and back at the Steelers facility next week because they'll be in the playoffs. And, Jeff, that is crazy. just crazy. It is. It's nuts to think about this team. Now, the the warning is they got to stop that run game. But if, if they do, I mean – Look out! I'm not. I don't, and I don't think the Steelers are going to go on a long playoff run. Uh, but to get to this point, with what they've had this year, and kudos to to Mike Tomlin and and all those that whole coaching staff. I know there'll be questions about Matt Matt Canada, but man, where this team came from, and it's a rebuilding year. Say what you want; they yeah. had a lot of lot of question marks coming into this season. If they finish in the postseason this year. That's a hell of a job by the guys over on the south side. It is, and I think it says a lot about a lot of the young players who are on this roster who are part of that ride and the lessons they can take forward as the Steelers continue to rebuild and put together the next team that will be a great contender that can bang with the best of the NFL. Jeff, thanks so much for joining me here on Locked on Steelers. Let people know they can find you, follow you, and get more of your work. Yeah, you can find me at Jay Hathorne on Twitter, and you can find work at 937thefan.com. And on 937thefan.com, as part of the Odyssey Network, you can find Chris uh, with the Locked On Podcast. You can check that out. It's on demand. It's easy to find. Or you can download the Odyssey app. Absolutely. Download the Odyssey app. It's an easy way to get all of our shows, 93.7 and Locked On Steelers. It's great. I'm Chris Carter, host of the Locked On Steelers podcast. You can find this show on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, or the Odyssey app like, like, like Jeff said, or YouTube where you find right now. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to this YouTube channel to get all of our daily Monday through Friday episodes as well as our bonus content. And if you want to read my work at the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, go to post-gazette.com where I cover pit, pit, all, all things pit sports. And we do some Steelers talk there as well, as including the Accrature Fan Advantage. So thanks again for checking us out. I'll be back Sunday night, Monday morning, talking Steelers-Browns. Did they make the playoffs? We'll talk about it right here. Happy, ha happy weekend to everybody. We'll see you here after the game Sunday. 